Mark Rogers TV and last word on sports, talking Big Ten recruiting and looking at the national rankings. It's not surprising to see Northwestern in that 50 range, according to rivals at 47 and 24-7 sports ranking at 52. But they seem to most most of the time turn those kind of yields into postseason appearances and a, a 10-win team in 2015. We bring in a Henry Bushnell of uh, InsideNU.com on the SB Nation platform for Northwestern Athletics. Henry, this is a first appearance here on Mark Rogers TV, so thanks for jumping on. And uh, first of all, let's dive into this recruiting class. Uh, as Rivals has it set up, it's a one four-star, 24-7 uh, SU with nothing but three stars across the board with 20 recruits. Who are those uh, guys that are kind of standing out that uh, Wildcat fans are excited to see uh, starting in 2016? Yeah, I think there's there's two guys. And Northwestern doesn't. There's not necessarily a lot of guys in this class that are gonna play right away. Uh, just based on you know the top guy in this class is probably Jeremy Larkin, the running back. Um, but he's Northwestern. That, that's Northwestern's deepest position right now. Because um, you've got Justin Jackson, who started as a true freshman. He'll be a junior in 2016. Um, but even you've got a guy like John Moten, who redshirted last year, who we've heard a lot of good things about. Uh, so Jeremy Larkin is a guy that I'm very excited about down the line, but not necessarily in 2016. Roger Campbell's another guy. He's the one Rivals four-star, I believe, uh, the cornerback from Texas, or some, from Missouri, my, uh, my fault there. Um, he's a he's an outstanding athlete, especially by Northwestern standards. Um, and that's the kind of player that Northwestern is getting more of. They don't get the five-star guys, the, the high four-star guys, but they get these th like fringe three, four guys um, that are much better athletes than players Northwestern has had in the past. Now, we both know that the recruiting rankings mean something, but when you talk about individual talent and, and players, there are two stars all over the country that have turned out to be impact players and five stars that have been busts. So if you look down that list, do you have any good feeling about anybody in particular, maybe because of some scouting reports that you've seen or maybe something that you've seen on tape? One guy that I definitely point to is Riley Lease, a local guy from Libertyville uh, here in in Illinois, uh, he when North when he committed to Northwestern over the summer, uh, summer of 2015, he was a two star. Uh, he was around it. If you look at 247's composite score, he's around a 0.77, I believe. Um, his senior year at Libertyville, he put up something like over 4,000 total yards as a quarterback, um, and over I think over 60 over 60 total touchdowns. Uh, he's he's an athlete. He's going to play wide receiver at Northwestern. There's no question about that. Uh, but he shot up the rankings during after his senior year. Um, and Northwestern has had a history of turning these you know, mobile quarterback athlete guys into successful wide receivers. Lisa's a guy. He's an explosive playmaker. I think he's a guy to watch. Um, maybe not right away, but Northwestern does have a need of receiver. Um, so I had to look out for him. And then the two other wide receivers in the class as well, uh, Ben Skaronik and also a guy with a long last name. We call him RCB. Um, so those are the three receivers in the class. Uh, we're gonna, I, you're gonna see at least one of them on the field in 2016, I would say. Henry Bushnell joining us from InsideNU.com, the SB Nation platform for Northwestern Athletics. So if you look at the 2015 losses, Henry, uh, you mentioned the issue at wide receiver. Where else on the field are you lacking some depth that you you need? Uh, maybe some of these freshmen they're not necessarily going to start, as you said, off the top, but maybe provide some depth. Yeah, I think offensive line is a big area, and I think you sort of hit the nail on the head. In Northwestern's three losses this year, they were killed in the trenches. Northwestern has improved in the trenches overall, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, they've gotten bigger. They've gotten better athletes. Uh, but in the three losses to Tennessee in the bowl and then to Iowa and Michigan, they were really dominated uh, at the line of scrimmage. So all, offensive line is a, certainly an area of need. Uh, you've got, I believe you've got five or six guys who will be graduating after 2016. Um, and there's sort of a void for two or three consecutive classes. A lot of Northwest, the top one or two offensive line recruits in the class haven't panned out. Uh, so there's a big need there uh, down the line. O offensive line, you haven't seen many offensive linemen play early, especially at Northwestern, play as true freshmen. I don't, I, I don't see that happening. This is a four-man class. You've got Jesse Myler. Uh, offensive tackle, who's actually originally from Toronto, uh, but played his uh, prep ball in Virginia. I've got Cameron Colwitch, he's a guard. Nick Urban, he's a guard. Uh, then Gunnar Vogel, uh, tackle. So you got two tackles, two guards, all guys in the you know mid three-star range. Uh, Northwestern is going to have to develop 
two, maybe three of those guys into starting Big Ten defensive linemen or offensive linemen in two or three years. Yeah, the back seven on defense, especially that secondary, was one of the better groups uh, in the Big Ten. Uh, before I let you go, Henry, interested about the passing attack. Thorson came on, uh, was a credible starter as a freshman. Uh, pretty much the same number of interceptions as touchdown passes, though. Barely threw for 1,000 yards. It was obviously on the running game. You were limited in the passing game. Is there expected development from Thorson going forward? And of course there is because he's just a freshman, but is this pretty much what he is? Or do we expect the, the offensive passing attack to be more dynamic? Yeah, I think I think you have to expect more from him. And it would be a it would be a huge failure from this coaching staff, and I guess from Thorson as well, if he doesn't develop. Um, a lot of Thorson's struggles as a red shirt freshman obviously were Due to inexperience, you know, it's his first time seeing a collegiate field. They were also due to the players around him, though. These, this offensive line unit and especially the receiver unit uh, really let him down in a lot of ways. The receivers couldn't get any separation. The passing offense as a whole was just broken. It wasn't all on Thorson. Um, if if those other units improve, I think you'll automatically see Thorson improve. Um, but yeah, you'd you'd like to see him. You'd like to see him progress in how he reads the game, how he thinks the game, um, how. He feels pressure, decides to run when he decides to pass. And I, and, I th and I think he will. It's just a question of how much. All right, Northwestern coming off 10-3 and three, and uh, three losses to three very outstanding teams in Tennessee, Michigan, and Iowa. Henry Bushnell from uh, InsideNU.com joining us to help break down the 2016 class. Henry, hopefully we can have you back on uh, sometime soon, maybe close to a spring football. Thanks a lot, Mark.